Forget gurus. Forget anyone claiming to be an online business expert without going through the challenges of entrepreneurship themselves. The Real Money, Real Business podcast is here to prove the best insights in online business comes from your fellow online business builders. We dig into stories of entrepreneurs selling their business on the Empire Flippers marketplace so that you can learn how they made their business profitable, how they overcame obstacles, and what lessons they learned in their online journey. If you want to take your business and your knowledge to the next level, you've come to the right podcast. Let's get started. Hey everyone, Lauren here with another great business to discuss on this episode of the Real Money, Real Business podcast. Today's guest is Jackie and he's selling his Amazon FBA business on the Empire Flippers Marketplace. Welcome to the show, Jackie. How are you doing today? I'm doing great. Fantastic. I'm really looking forward to learning more about you and your business. But before we dive in, let's go over a brief summary of the business. This is an Amazon FBA business created in August 2020 in the children and office supply niches. The average monthly revenue for the business is $21,968, and it makes an average of $7,389 per month in net profit. For everyone listening, you can visit empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 57316 to learn more about the business. Or you can unlock this listing to start your due diligence if you're interested in purchasing this asset. The assets included in the sale are an Amazon Central Seller account with three SKUs, supplier contracts and relationships, and a trademark. So now that we know more about the business, let's hear from the seller. Jackie, can you tell us a little bit about your background in building and running online businesses? Yeah, absolutely. I think the biggest advantage that I had running this business or starting it from August of 2020 was that I happened to be in the center of the manufacturing location, which is China at that time. I think that really helped propel the business in the product development phase, in kind of the freight forwarding or logistics phase, just simply because I was really close to the factories that manufactured these SKUs. And I had a lot of back and forth with these factories and personal relationships with the factory owners and the product development managers. And that really helped kind of propel the product quality that enabled the success of the business. Yeah, wonderful. That's very helpful. Have you owned any online businesses before this one? No. Before this, you know, I had a normal day job. I was in the consulting space, strategy consulting space for a bit. And then before that, I was trained as an engineer. So kind of entrepreneurship, I only started with this venture and it's led me here. Great. So what was the catalyst for moving away from your corporate day job into online business? And what gave you the idea to start this business in particular? The reason probably similar to that of a lot of other people, it was I didn't find the fulfillment personally or emotionally with the last job as much as I was hoping. And I felt it was more of just being a job and trying to make something work whereas I didn't see the concrete results related to the work, right? And that was some of the things I was looking forward to in starting a business and starting an entrepreneurship was really building with my own hands something that I can see, I can feel, and especially seeing that being delivered to customers and seeing reviews come out and seeing people using the products and the concepts that I've designed as the fruition of the whole process, right? And that was very fulfilling for me. And the reason for this business or this e-commerce business in particular was because back at that time with COVID and everything, online shopping was a big deal. And I wanted to jump into that trend in the middle of the summer last year. And I think it was an opportune time to jump in. Yeah, that's a wonderful story and a great journey that you've been on. What are the reasons that you're selling the business now? I think the biggest reason is that when you do something for a while, at least for me, right, you start off with being very passionate about this and you want to understand and you want to learn all the details of being an Amazon seller and how to fulfill your products, how to put labels on the box and how to quality check and perform quality assurance of these products. And that all was very exciting to me and fulfilled that part of my curiosity, especially the first half a year or so. I think I'm at a point now where I've gone through that process and I kind of know how it works. And to me, it's a little bit becoming something more of a daily routine rather than something that stimulates my everyday thinking and arouses my curiosity and design and creativity, right? And I think whenever I hit that point, 
it makes me think if this particular project is for me moving forward. And I've come to the conclusion that perhaps moving forward with this and maybe putting it into the hands of someone who is still very um, curious about the space is the best option for me and for that person. Yeah, great. It certainly sounds like you're ready for your next big adventure. Absolutely. So it's been quite a, as I said, a learning journey with this business, especially since it's your first online business. Were there any major success stories that you enjoyed or lessons that you learned that you would apply to future sites or businesses? Right. I think the biggest success factors to me is all about kind of product development, right? When you find good products and you put your heart into thinking about them and developing them, it really saves you a lot of time and effort moving forward, right? So for me, with a couple of the SKUs that I put together, it was really a combination of market research with gut instincts. And you know, I really thought about what people needed during the COVID times and periods and put together solutions for them. So I think that's one of the successes of this business and moving forward is something that I can definitely take to new endeavors or new, or new ventures is kind of focusing on what I'm providing and the type of solution that I'm providing to a customer. Fantastic. Yeah. On the flip side of the coin, I'm sure there are some things that didn't quite go according to plan. If you had to go back and start this business venture again, is there anything that you would do differently second time around? Yeah, absolutely. I think I've gotten a lot smarter with inventory planning. And I think that's something that I had no idea about starting an e-commerce business, right? Especially a combination for me, like a double whammy. It was me starting a business as a first-time entrepreneur, plus entering the e-commerce space, which I was completely new to, both at the same time. So it was kind of hitting me from both sides. And to me, I really had no clue on how much inventory to prepare for, right? Just estimating sales on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis and using that projection as well as the seasonality of certain products to prepare for the amount of inventory that I would need, right? And for some of my SKUs in the beginning, I would kind of underprepare and then have to really be very hurried in sending inventory over. And then for some of the other SKUs, and maybe I oversent inventory. Those are really good lessons learned as part of a first-time business owner as well as an e-commerce seller. Absolutely. Yeah, that's fantastic advice there. In terms of the traffic, does most of your traffic come to you via the Amazon platform? Yeah, almost 100%. Okay, wonderful. And in terms of marketing, do you do run any PPC campaigns or paid marketing campaigns? Yeah, absolutely. It's part of the gig. (laughs) Yeah, definitely is. So Jackie, if you were to keep the business, what are some of the ways that you would try and grow it further? I think it was a combination, right? combination of how to maintain your kind of all-star SKUs and make sure that they are on point and continue to provide with the profits that you need to scale the business, right? On that part, I think for the SKUs that I have, it's really about dealing with kind of the seasonality at a good pace, right? For example, two of the SKUs that I have perform extremely well when school starts or kind of January, February, March, and then summer, July, August, September. And those are the times where kind of the most profits can be made for those SKUs. If it was for me, the importance would be to maintain the SKU at a good ranking on Amazon in the off season, and maybe perhaps by slightly lowering the price or just using tactics to coupons and kind of promotional discounts to maintain it at the right ranking. And then kind of prepare or even over prepare inventory and raise prices at the right time when peak season arrives for those products. So that would be on the side of of the existing, right? And then I think there's definitely a lot of new opportunities with these products. You know, some of these products are in packs. I think a big opportunity is to provide uh, packs of different quantities. Instead of 10, you could provide five or 20. Those are things that I've seen being very useful just because I really see customers kind of texting me or emailing me, messaging me through the platform saying that they don't want that much or they think they want to buy like 10 of them. Is there a big discount? So those are some of the quantity bulk discounts that we can leverage as well as kind of product development, right? I think products in general have, I think, a significant lifespan, but certain products have that lifespan longer than others. So I think it can, spending some time with developing the products further would really help. 
Yeah, those are all great points. As you say, you know, setting your products up for success by planning ahead. I think that's a wonderful strategy. Talk me through your supply chain. Where are your suppliers based and how does inventory get from the suppliers to Amazon? Yep. So for the three main SKUs associated with this sale, one of the manufacturers is based in Shenzhen, China, which is exactly where I am right now. The other two are close to the Shanghai area, not specifically in the metropolis or in that urban setting, but in the kind of the satellite cities close to Shanghai. And, you know, they get over to the Amazon FBA warehouse is through 95% of the time C through the freight forwarders that I work with. Okay, perfect. Yeah, that sounds pretty streamlined and a stress-free process. Can you walk me through your role in the business? How many hours per week do you work on the business and what sort of tasks take up your time? Right. So I think my time investment in the business started off when I started. It was definitely full time when I started because I really didn't understand the business and wanted to dive to the thick of it. But I think it kind of shrank significantly as I understood the business as the products took off and profits started coming in stably. Right now, it's at an equilibrium where I put maybe, I would say, between five or 10 hours. So some week could be more than five, some weeks, maybe just five. And the bulk of that time is, you know, one is just monitoring, right? Just taking a look at the sales and seeing if there's anything significant or anything that's off the normal. And two is inventory replenishment and just having that conversation with the supplier on the fact that I need to buy from them and the amount of stuff that I need to buy and providing labels to them, kind of the gist, the bread and butter of running Amazon business. And then lastly is just PPC ads and spending the right amount of time to adjust it accordingly. Fantastic. And do you have any employees who help you out with any of these tasks? So at the very beginning of the business, I had you know a couple of friends help me out with taking a look at the data and you know, especially checking the inventory, putting in labels. That was really on a freelancing perspective. I handled most of this stuff myself. And as of today, or as of half a year ago, it's really mostly by myself, given the fact that the amount of hours taken is really not that significant. Yeah, for sure. So for someone who's not familiar with the FBA business model or the type of products that you sell, what skills or requirements are needed to run this business successfully? I think analytical skills is very important, just understanding how this business is profitable, right? Because you really have your P&L on a SKU basis and on a marketplace basis, right? Selling a thousand products every month doesn't mean that you're actually making profit on it. It could mean that you're losing money on it, right? If you don't plan out accordingly, if you don't send inventory at the right time at the cheapest rate, or if you overorder inventory or overpay for inventory. So it's really important analytically to understand unit economic spaces that you're actually making money on these products. So I think that's very important, right? You know, I wouldn't say you have to be a math guru or have a PhD in, you know, mathematics or applied statistics, but you really have to be, you know, sharp with numbers, right? That's number one. But number two, I think is just attention to detail because some of the things with Amazon is you have to provide product labels, you have to provide something very specific, you know, tweak specific numbers here or there. So, you know, just having a routine and kind of jotting things down regularly and being very meticulous with your approach is extremely important. Yeah, those are both great points applicable to, yeah, as you say, any buyer in this FBA business model, I think. Jackie, what would you identify as the biggest risks with your business that buyers should be aware of? I think one of the bigger risks, I think, would be more global rather than something specific to my business, right? I think Amazon as a platform is amazing. And what it has provided is a very simple way for sellers to profit from it sustainably, right? And due to the success of Amazon, you know, acquiring customers at a rapid pace globally, sellers are able to profit from those influx of customers, right? And I think the biggest risk would be like a risk for all Amazon operators or Amazon sellers would be kind of the global shift in customer behavior, you know, whether it's moving from online to a little bit more offline, given that COVID has died down a lot, or just, you know, other brands or other ways of attracting customers, for example, you know, direct to consumer websites or other ways of marketing that attract customers away from Amazon. I think that would be the biggest risk that I can think of. It hasn't really shown yet. 
but I'd be wary of that. Yeah, definitely. So obviously no one knows this business better than you do. What sort of support are you willing to offer buyers to help ease the transition? Yeah, I think that's one of the things that I'm willing to put in more effort just because, you know, for me as a first time entrepreneur and a first time entrepreneur in the e-commerce space, to me, this business is really like a baby that I've built. And I want to see that the baby gets delivered to the right family moving forward. And now that, you know, the new family is going to adopt the baby. So yeah, for me, I would say it's definitely not indefinite, right? But I'd be willing to offer significant support kind of both on just answering questions with regard to the product, as well as facilitating the communication with the manufacturers. Yeah, I would say 30 days, 60 days, you know, a reasonable amount of time, both in terms of email and calls, I'd be willing to support. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah, that's very generous of you. And I think buyers are going to be very relieved to hear that. When it does come time to negotiate the sale, would you be open to negotiating something like an earnout? Yeah, I think I would be open to it. It would really depend on kind of the terms on the specifics of what the buyer is looking for, but I'd be open to that. Yeah. Perfect. And would you be willing to commit to a non-compete agreement? Yes, absolutely. You know, for me, it's quite simple. It's something that I've built and I continuously passionate about it. And the reason I mentioned that I want to be out of it is that that initial passion and creativity and curiosity has slightly died off. And, you know, for me, it's it's a strong signal to move on to something else. So it's under no gain for me to kind of go back into this space, having already known how it operates and how to run an Amazon business. Yeah, certainly. So Jackie, the last question of the interview, and probably the most important question, if you had to put yourself into the shoes of a buyer, why do you think your business is a business worth buying? Right. I think a couple of fronts, right? It's just one is on the product side. It's the products that I'm selling over the past 12 months or over 12 months have generated significant revenue and profit. And the number of SKUs that I'm selling is on the low side, meaning that generate those revenues and profits, the amount of management or the time incurred to manage these SKUs is less than if you have too many SKUs. So I think that would be the biggest advantage, right? And then some of the products that I'm selling as part of this deal, it kind of makes sense from a trend perspective, right? You know, it's education-based, it caters towards teachers and students that require these products. It'll be something that will be needed moving forward for an, a significant number of years. So that's why I think it definitely needs to be strongly considered as a prospect of being bought. Yeah, it definitely sounds like a very valuable asset. Is there anything else that you'd like to share with our listeners that I might have missed? Nope, that's all. Brilliant. Well, thanks so much for your time, Jackie. It's been really wonderful talking to you and learning more about your business. Thank you. All right, everyone, thanks for listening. To learn more and see if this listing has already been sold, head over to empireflippers.com slash marketplace and search for listing number 57316. If you're watching this on YouTube, click the link in the description to go straight to the listing. Once you've unlocked this listing, you'll be given everything you need to know about this business. So until next time, enjoy your digital journey.